Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, tonight is a continuation of uh, last night's video that I didn't get finished editing, so I'm continuing it on this one. And the first item that I'm going to make over is a clipboard. And um, as you can see, this is the old style clipboard. You can still buy them in the stores. But this one and the other one, I'm only going to be doing actually one on this video, but um, this one is one that I thrifted. And uh, I like to pick these up at thrift stores because they're usually about a, a dollar. And um, they're just really easy to make over and uh, use them to, uh, to display photos or... Um, a notepad or a recipe or uh, they just have a really neat look depending on what you do to them and there's just a number of things that you can do to these and if you like scrapbooking then this is going to be right up your alley so I'm using the color drop cloth on this and I'm doing one coat now here I'm painting the clip also but uh, during the process, I changed my mind, so I wouldn't have had to do that uh, because I'm just gonna make this uh, clip look aged. So I give it one coat of the color drop cloth, except on the back, I do have to do two coats because I'm not gonna be doing any decoupaging or decorating on the back of this clipboard. Uh, so it's gonna need two coats. Now you could definitely decorate that as well, but I just didn't see the need to. So once I get uh, one coat on here, then I'm gonna decoupage this. This is Chinese calligraphy paper, and I very lightly stamped uh, script on it, and this is from the stamp uh, Kindest Regards, which is a, um, an IOD stamp. So now I'm gonna decoupage this on here. And I've, I took that rice paper, it, it's a, called Chinese calligraphy paper, and I ordered that from Amazon, uh, and I've coffee stained it. Uh, what I didn't know is that when you, when you coffee stain Chinese calligraphy paper, I don't know if all rice paper is like this or not, but it's very, very fragile at that point. So, um, in hindsight, I might would have I might would have taken some strong coffee in a little spray bottle and sprayed it down and just kept adding until I got the look that I wanted. But um, I did submerge this in coffee and uh, I do love the look that I got, but like I said, it was very fragile. And here I've kind of torn a little place in this, which is fine because I'm gonna be, um, I'm gonna be, kind of layering this so um, and I have to piece this here at the top but that's okay uh, the idea is just to get it covered because to me the the more ragged it looks the better so just get it covered and that's really all that matters here so I kind of uh, cut it in places and then tear off what's in my way and piece it back and that even gives me some extra to piece that little hole that I made in the bottom of the clipboard. Now this doesn't have to fit perfectly. It can overhang because when it dries, uh, we're gonna take some sandpaper, just a um, fine grit sandpaper and sand around the edges and that will not only cut that excess off, but then it'll neaten up the edges. These little clipboards are really fun to decorate and this is where you can use your own imagination and your own personality and uh, anything works. So um, this here is something so cool that I just learned. You can take a stencil and this is a uh, more of a detailed stencil, which I think is what works better and a makeup brush, that's all this is here, and some uh, cheap um, eyeshadow. And you can, uh, you can 
stencil those images on there and make it really faint or you can go as dark as you want uh, i like to blend colors when i do these they're they're very very pretty that way and uh, so here i'm just putting the colors that i'm going to be using on this uh, clipboard but um because i'm a neutral person i i love um i love just really faint decor and i just think it has such a soft look and a really feminine look and i i just love this and this kind of brush i don't know what this is called but it works so good for this now i wouldn't recommend um eyeshadow that is uh glittery unless you just like that look i don't uh but I would get a matte finish and don't worry about coming off it if you rub your hands over it immediately you might get a little on your hands but it doesn't seem to smear and um and it stays on well i've even uh, i've even did this technique on uh one layer of um of a napkin and then decoupage that onto some pumpkins and it it decoupages really well and then you've actually sealed it in uh, but for this it's really not going to need sealed i think uh, if you wanted to you could uh, spray some uh, clear matte finish on it but i didn't with this i think it, it's going to be fine without sealing it but when i learned about this it just really really amazed me and now i'm adding that um that finish to the clip and and all i did on that was just paint some brown paint any brown paint i used chalk paint so it would stick well and then i took some acrylic over the top of that that was uh, a bronze color because apple barrel makes uh, some metallic paints and i love their bronze and so i painted that over the top and then i go back later and add just a little bit of green to give it somewhat of a patina and uh, and then I really like the look that I got with that now here I'm using some decoupage paper and cutting out this bird because I didn't want the surroundings even though they did match my look um, I didn't want those patterns competing with each other so I'm just going to place this bird on the bottom and while I have that bird placed and before I glue it I'm going to draw out some uh, tree limbs behind it so that this bird will be perched on some tree limbs or on a tree limb and so i drew it out where where i needed my limbs to be so that um, when i place that bird back uh, it's going to be positioned right and now i'm just taking some acrylic paint and i think i'm using burnt umber and um, and i think maybe in just a, some sort of off-white it really doesn't matter and uh, i'm double loading my brush and if you've ever watched donna dewberry i used to watch her all the time years ago and she uh she can teach you to paint anything with just one stroke and i think hers is called one stroke painting donna dewberry if you want to look her up but um th this is very easy to paint uh if you watch her and it really doesn't take long to catch on so what it does is it does your uh, painting and your shading all in one stroke so you just double load that brush and and it just it makes it really easy but if you don't want to paint this then you can just decoupage what you want on here maybe you can find one that's already on a tree limb uh, this was just a way for me to add one more dimension and I think that that these look really good it the more that you can add to them the more dimension you can add to them I wanted to keep it simple but I wanted to give it plenty of interest in layering so like I said I'm just using these two colors to to make the limbs and uh, it's very easy painting you just drag your corner after you get it loaded you just drag that back corner with um, you don't want to use too much force you just want to lightly drag it this is a little harder than painting pumpkins it's it isn't hard to me at all but 
it is a little more intimidating. Uh, I don't think that there's much easier to paint than pumpkins. But I just wanted to paint a little something on here to give it some, uh, some extra dimension. And I wanted a limb behind that bird, and this is just the only way I knew to get it. So once I get enough of these little limbs, then I'm going to start adding my uh, leaves. And I do the same thing with the leaves. I put uh, the off-white on one side uh, and then green on the other. And, and then I just I put the tip of my brush down and then put some pressure in the middle of the leaf and then lift it off. And then when you lift it off, you get that point. Uh, but like I said, look Donna Dewberry up if you, if you want to know how to paint uh, because she can turn anyone into a painter. I don't know that she's still on anywhere. I haven't seen her in a long time, but I'm sure that she has old videos. So again, it was called Donna Dewberry One Stroke Painting. I think One Stroke Painting with Donna Dewberry. I think that's what it was called. I have another video somewhere, and I'll look it up, uh, where I do um, leaves a, a really more detailed um, video with uh, painting leaves, and I think I paint a little bit of uh, limbs also on that one, and I think I'm painting a birdhouse on it, and so I'll look that up and try to uh, link it in my description because uh, it, it will make this painting a lot more clear for you. So once I get enough of these leaves on here, and I don't want to go overboard with them because I don't want the leaves in the branch to be the star of the show. Obviously, I want it to be that little bird, so I just keep this kind of simple and not very dark. I don't want to get too much color here. And then it's ready to place that little bird. So when I place that bird, I realize he needs some uh, legs. He has somewhat of a leg or legs, but I need to finish painting that in. So I just kind of paint his legs in. And then I glue him in place. And I used rubber cement here. You can use whatever glue works for you, but I just happen to have rubber cement. And I just glue him on his little limb there. And now this would be finished, except that I want to add a hang tag to it because I think hang tags add a lot. And I don't know, I've gotten really um, into making hang tags lately. And um, I think I'm gonna start adding them to, um, to all my pieces because uh, it just kind of adds not only does it add a lot of character to it, but the holidays are getting closer, and um, and I think if if the items have a tag on them like that, it makes them more uh, more giftable. I guess I don't know if that's a word, but um, people I feel like would be more likely to buy them as a gift. So. Uh, I'm just going to put these little hang tags on it, and hang tags, you can't go wrong with them, and I talked about maybe doing some of those on video, and I didn't get around to it today, but I'll, uh, I want to do a video soon on creating gift bags and packages, and, um, and I'll, I'll probably use that opportunity to make some hang tags, because there's so many things that you can do with them, and, um, uh, so easy. Uh, my sister and I sat down and in one day, in a short time actually in one day because we had other things going on in the store, we were able to uh, make close to a hundred tags just cre and not even making them the same. We, we did a, a lot of different designs and uh, the more that you make, the faster it goes and they're actually really fun to make. So I just layered some uh, some decoupage paper on top of some uh, cardstock and then uh, glued it together. And now I'm just going to tear out some more, um, another, that backing that I put on this one. I'm going to tear a little piece and glue over the top of it and stamp this little bird. And by the way, this is a little set of clear stamps from the Dollar Tree. 
So I was really amazed that the Dollar Tree got some clear stamps because I just really love these and um, stamps are not always cheap and actually they can get pretty pricey. So to have these at the Dollar Tree, I think was a real treat. So like I said, I just tore that piece of, uh, I think this is a card stock here and just glued it to the front of that. The only thing with these stamps is you need something a little substantial. You don't want something uh, very thin. So as long as you have one piece of card stock on there, then the card stock and your layering will be plenty uh, to make it a sturdy tag. You can use book pages. Like I said, as long as you have something substantial like cardstock or uh, some sort of thin cardboard, you could even use cereal boxes. Uh, you can make these tags out of just about anything. And like I said, this one's just gonna have a little bird on it because it kind of goes along with the bird theme of the clipboard. And I'm just gonna, um, punch a hole in that, tie it on with jute string, and that one is finished. And I just love the look of that old paper, or old looking paper, with the script and, and that little faint design from the eyeshadow. And then you get this pop of color here in the corner. And then uh, the next item we're gonna do is this little wine bottle. And all I'm doing with this is painting some um, crackle medium on it. This is a Dixie Bell product, but now you don't have to use crackle medium at all. You can use just Elmer's glue. And you paint that on and let that dry, which I've let this dry here. This dries very shiny, so it's hard to tell it's dry. But um, with Elmer's glue, you just let it dry the same as you do with this and you just paint your paint over it and you have to be really careful that you just paint one coat on and if you don't get it covered enough just very quickly add a little bit more on but don't go back over and do a second coat uh, and always keep your strokes going in the same direction uh, but you don't have to worry about getting full coverage because you're going to get a lot of cracks and um, so if you miss some it just kind of blends in with all those cracks and I'm using that same process here um, that I used on the clipboard on this piece also. And um, once you get this on here, like I said before, you can decoupage this on. And I'm going to be decoupaging this on the bottle. And you'll see how easily it decoupages. And um, one thing that I love about this method is you can kind of blend colors and maybe you can start on one end with one color like I am here and go like I started with a darker green and went just a little bit lighter and then I ended up with a, a soft yellow or more of a warm yellow I guess and uh, it's just such a pretty effect. And I wouldn't have thought that it would stay on, but it stays on fabric well, and it stays on paper well. So, um, it's just really fun to do. So now, because I'm just going to kind of randomly decoupage this on the bottom, I'm not going to worry about covering the whole thing, because I want some of this crackle to show. And uh, so I'm just decoupaging this in random places, and covering a lot of the bottle, but not all of it. And because this bottle was green to begin with, uh, this I just felt like this green would be good to put on here and then any that shows through will coordinate with, with this uh, paper. And as you can see here, I got some very large cracks and uh, I don't know if it's because I didn't use a slick stick or uh, I didn't spray these bottles with a clear matte finish, but that was fine with me because I like these big cracks. I think it just adds more uh, to the bottle. And it's okay if these overlap just a little bit. The patterns still seem like they do really well, and I still like the look that I get. And I guess I've said before I really love decorating bottles because, again, there's so much you can do with them. And uh, I'm kind of decorating these with fall in mind. I'm trying to use some fall colors uh, so that I can um, display this with my fall vignettes. 
and then because all I have on here is this subtle pattern in my um, cracks then I feel like this needed um, needed a stamp so I'm taking the um, one layer of one ply from a napkin and I'm uh, stamping onto that and I tried different stamps here and one was too light there and uh, this one showed up well but I felt like it was too harsh so I didn't end up going with this this one either but I used this same bird and did it in an olive green um, ink and I was happier with the olive green. Now, had I had some uh, light brown, I might would have used the light brown, but I felt like the black was too harsh and I ended up using the green. So again, I'm just tearing this out because I wanna keep it organic looking. I could cut it, uh, but I don't want to see those sharp edges. So I'm just tearing this and then I'll decoupage that onto the front of the bottle. And then once I get this uh, image decoupaged on here, uh, I also do a hang tag on this. So every item that I've done today in this whole vignette, even last night, I've put hang tags on. So um, you guys may get tired of seeing those, but I just think it adds a lot to the piece. So um, I'm gonna be adding those a lot. And like I said, you can make these hang tags as uh, simple or um, or as uh, detailed as you want. But with this one, I'm just tying some jute, or not some jute, I'm tying some raffia grass around the top. And then I'll be adding my hang tag. So, um, like I said, the, the hang tags, there's really not many rules to them. Just do what you think looks good. And if your item is rustic, then obviously it's going to look good with a rustic tag. And uh, if you have a shabby chic item, then uh, make your tags more shabby chic. But I'm just tying that on, and then this little bottle will be finished. And I'm sorry I didn't get an after picture of this one. I wish I had gotten a better picture, but um, I got the picture, but I didn't show it well. And now this is uh, a little bottle that, um, that I'm using that I want this brown to show through on my crack. So I'm doing that same, uh, that same crackle medium on this and then let that dry. And I'm gonna go over this one also with um with the color drop cloth and again just uh, do one heavy coat and keep your um, strokes in the same direction so like i said just cover this whole bottle and uh, let that dry and then you'll start to see your cracks appear and then we're going to do some decoupaging on this one also and the decoupage that i'm going to be using on this bottle is uh, some of the michael holes Holtz decoupage paper and um, I'll try to link that in the description I can't think of the name of it right now but uh, I'm just going to be decoupaging that onto uh, this little uh, flat section in the front so I just tore one of the birds out of this paper and I'm going to decoupage that right on that flat area and um, I didn't cut it out I just put it on there and um, made sure to concentrate my glue where I wanted it. And then when that dries, then I'll just tear it off and finish uh, brushing it down with decoupage. That's one of the good things about these bottles, especially when they're, um, when they're really rustic is uh, you don't have to be precise and that just kind of adds to the character of it. And here I've let it dry, and as you can see, I'm just kind of tearing my excess off, and then I'll go back over it with some decoupage to help those ends stay down. And then on the back side, it's I have more of a flat surface to work with, but I'm just taking another one of the birds on that decoupage paper and putting that onto the back. And then that's all that I'll be doing to this one except adding a, another hang tag. 
and that one didn't take long at all to finish and like I said adding that little hang tag to the top adds a lot of character and um, like I said it makes it way more uh, someone way more likely I think to buy it as a gift I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next thank you so much for watching have a great evening and God bless you and your family